Welcome back to week four of my Achilles recovery journey. Once again, I am Dr. Stacy Barber, also known as The Physio Fix. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, of course. Um, and I'm here to share my journey of my Achilles recovery and kind of take you through what I'm doing each week to help really push me in the right direction and to accelerate my rehab protocol. Um, so this is week four of my, my journey. And so not a lot has changed from week three to the week four. I still have my walking boot that's set in 22 degrees of plantar flexion. Um, the only difference is that since my doctor gave me more leniency to kind of like do what I wanted to do in terms of my protocol because he trusts me and he knows that I know about tissue healing and timelines that he's letting me be weight bearing. So um, I can take off my boot uh, for like therapy when I'm walking around the house and standing and I can do, you know, weight shifting at this point. I can move forward and back, side to side. Um, I'm even doing like little circles. I can stand on one leg. I can do double leg calf raises, stuff like that. Um, because we know that the thing that we're trying to protect is extreme dorsiflexion right now. It's not necessarily weight bearing that we're trying to avoid. Most people, when they do weight bearing, they also have a tendency to go into more dorsiflexion. But since I know that dorsiflexion is where I should limit myself, I'm completely comfortable being in weight bearing. So I'm standing up for a lot of the time. You'll see I took my first steps this week. Um, exactly when I hit the four week mark post-surgery, I got up. I started being weight bearing more often. I took my crutches away and I started like taking little baby steps. It does not look pretty guys. I have like zero dorsiflexion. So that means that like um, my ankle doesn't move past neutral right now, but that's okay because um, as long as you're getting that proprioception back and that's huge for recovery, that you're moving in the right direction. So if you guys feel like you can obey those restrictions on your own, um, talk to your physical therapist, talk to your doctor and see if they will let you be at least partially weight bearing at this point and see if you can do at least some stuff while you're doing like physical therapy um, in terms of weight bearing. So it's incredibly important to get back on your feet as quickly as possible to really start loading everything. Um, our bones get weak when we don't load ourselves. So I don't want my bones to you know, become brittle and I don't wanna have a fracture or anything like that when I get back to doing my normal stuff. So I'm up and about and moving around. Another thing, this week I went back to work. So last week I took off. So I already had a planned vacation. I didn't actually get to go on my vacation because of the surgery so I use that week number three to do like rehab and really focus on like my mental and physical health and week four I had to go back to work because I can't stay off forever so I went back to work this week so I did find that when I was you know wearing my boot and treating patients and kind of up all day long um, my scar and my incisions got really really tender they got really red um, very irritated I'll show you a little picture like it started to almost kind of open my incision. So I really tried to take my boot off as much as possible. It didn't matter if I you know, used um, extra padding in the back of my boot, which I'll show you like these little extra pads like this. Um, this didn't actually help at all. I still have a very like thin like skin in the back of my incision right now. It's like brand new baby skin. So it's very tender, it's very sensitive and any kind of like shifting like this or moving at all, it really, really bothers me. So um, this didn't help me at all. I know a lot of people use that like Vacoped, I think that's how you pronounce it, that sort of walking boot. That one seems to have a thicker liner in the back of it. So if you have that one, um, that one might feel a little bit more comfortable throughout the day. So this is exactly what he told me to get. So I obviously want to listen to him and I got this boot, but the other one, yeah, like I said, it seems to have a thicker liner. You can get like extra liners and it's kind of like more squishy and like foamy. So maybe get that boot instead. Or if you get this boot, maybe wear really thick socks or something that's a little bit more comfortable or like put something on your incision, at least when you're like working throughout the day. So then you don't get a lot of that like friction rubbing and it's almost like chafing. It's like rubbing it raw. So definitely not a pleasant part of my week. I felt like when the more I was up, obviously the more swelling that I felt and the more stiffness I felt too. Um, so I really tried to take my boot off as much as possible. I would, between patients or on my lunch break, take my boot off, you know, like start doing ankle exercises. I would get up, move around, stuff like that. And I found that that was helpful. And then as soon as I got home, I would, you know, elevate my leg and try to ice it. And that was helpful too.
In terms of my range of motion, I'm really limiting my dorsiflexion right now, as I said already. So we know that dorsiflexion is really the thing that we're trying to limit, at least early on. We don't want to be too aggressive and pushing into it. So I am just get letting myself go to that point where I feel that it's uncomfortable and I will just hold it there and then come right out of it. So I am not really trying to push in any pain right now. Um, I'm really fearful at this stage of, you know, re-rupturing. I'm only four weeks post-surgery and the graft is still pretty strong. I mean, it's not really a graft, I guess. The, the sutures are very strong at this point. So they're very tough and we know that over the next, you know, six weeks or so that it's going to really like start revascularizing. So that means that like it's tissue remodeling phase. So it's very strong at this point and then it's actually going to become weaker around everyone's different though. So don't hold me to this, but usually around between like eight and 12 weeks is that remodeling phase and the tissue is actually weakest. And then once you get past that 12 week mark, you're like in the clear. So that's why I'm really trying not to push things. I'm like letting my ankle go to where it wants to stop. And then I'm not really pushing it past that point yet. So I do go back to my doctor next week at week five and hopefully he'll like change my boot, give me a little bit more dorsiflexion and kind of give me the green light to go a little bit deeper into that dorsiflexion on my own. But as I said last week, he did not tell me to restrict anything. He said I can kind of do whatever I wanted to in terms of my protocol. And so I'm really, really taking that advice and kind of running with it. I'm pushing myself. I'm doing a lot of strength training at this point and Dorsiflexion is literally the only thing that I'm limiting myself in. So I'm pretty much full weight bearing throughout the day. And when I'm weight bearing, I'm not wearing my boot. I feel like it's really awkward if you're stuck in 22 degrees of plantar flexion to get up and walk around. It feels like I'm limping and I can walk a lot more normal, normal because it's not normal at all without my boot and just barefoot. So I'm taking very slow, small steps. I'm very controlled. I make sure that I go really, really, really slow and I'm listening to my body. So if I feel like I've been up for too long, you know, I get down and sometimes I'll put my boot back on. Um, yesterday, actually, I was doing stuff in the house. Like I was, you know, washing dishes and cooking food. So I would say that I was without my boot and weight bearing for probably three hours at a time. And I could feel that, you know, by the end of that three hours, I was just getting fatigued. It was getting tired. And then that's when you worry that like, what happens if, you know, you take a wrong step or you try to like take a quick step and then you go into more dorsiflexion than you currently have. And that's when you fear the re-rupturing. So I'm really doing a lot of things that I know a lot of people would probably not recommend doing at this point. So talk to your physical therapist. It's really gonna be a case by case basis. Everyone's surgery is different. Every person is different. Every surgeon is different. So talk to your people in your circle and see kind of what's best for you. So since I went back to work this week, I did still four days of physical therapy this week. I'm gonna cut back to three days of physical therapy next week. So we still worked a lot on range of motion stuff. You know, we are really just working more range of motion and plantar flexion at this point and working on kind of that push off mechanism. So you'll see some of these videos right here. So, you know, I'm like standing, I'm pushing my le back leg behind me. I'm trying to get more like plantar flexion at the end or that like push off mechanism, which I'm gonna need for walking and running and all of those things. Um, we're also working on strengthening like different areas of the foot and the ankle. So we're working on the arch, we're working on the foot intrinsics, we're working on the fibularis muscles, which is like the outside muscles. We're working on the anterior tibialis muscles, which is at the front of the shin. And then we're working on like the posterior tib muscles and the big toe muscles, like all of those things we're working on strengthening right now. Um, and the plantar flexors. So we're doing, we're doing plantar flexion in seated position. We're doing plantar flexion in standing position. My therapist does a lot of isometrics on me. And so that's obviously gonna stop me at a certain point. And then I'm just gonna try to meet her resistance at that point. Um, the first week it was really, really hard. I felt like I wasn't doing anything. This week I feel like I had a little bit more oomph, a little bit more force in there. She could probably tell you it's probably still pretty pathetic, but I think I'm doing a little bit better in terms of that. Um, I, yeah, I was able to do a double leg calf raise this week. She asked me what percentage of my weight was probably on my left leg versus my right. My left leg is my hurt leg for those wondering. And I told her it was probably about 30%, 70%. So no, it's not 50-50 yet. Um, most people wouldn't even be weight bearing at this point. But the fact that I feel like my strength is coming back a lot quicker than you know other people is a really good sign. I do think that you know starting 
exercises really early on and being very diligent with them has been the biggest game changer, at least in my own recovery. So let's speak about that for a second. Every morning I wake up and my ankle is really stiff. I'm not wearing my boot when I sleep anymore because I couldn't sleep well with my boot on. It would just hurt really bad. I think it was just that incision line. It would just kind of like scrape if I turned to a different position. So I took off the boot and I lay on my side and I put a pillow between my legs and that actually allows me to sleep a lot better. And I'm not worried about going into dorsiflexion because not my, my foot goes into dorsiflexion when I sleep anyways. So. I can sleep a lot better, but that means that when I wake up in the morning, I feel like I'm starting like day one again. Like my stiffness is there and I feel like I really have to work on, you know, doing a lot of range of motion stuff early on in my day. Um, so every morning I wake up and I do a hundred up and down. So just like gas pedal pumps on my foot and I do a hundred circles one direction, a hundred circles the other direction. Um, then I grab my band. I have like a TheraBand in my, my um, nightstand and I do 50 plantar flexion down and I do 50 eversion, 50 inversion, and then 50 big toe um, flexion. And then I do, I stand up and I do like a little bit of rocking forward and back. And I'm usually on my crutches in the morning at this point because it's still very stiff. So I'll go rocks forward and back. Not a certain number, I just kind of want to loosen it up. I'll do rocks side to side. I'll do like little circles one way, circles the other way. And then I'll do toe like lift ups. Um, so I do those, no set number there. And then I'll just do like a little bit of like some calf raises, but just on that one leg with my other leg still supporting me. And then I can start kind of doing my baby steps to get ready for my day. So I do that every single morning. So I have to wake up 30 minutes extra early because just to do that little routine. And then I'm doing my therapy every day, um, either with my therapist or on my own, at least an hour of exercises somewhere in the middle of my day. And then at the end of day, I do another 30 minutes of exercises, similar to what I do in the morning, but a little bit more progressive because I have been on my feet all day. I've been moving around. It's not the same as that stiffness that I have in the morning. So I can do a lot more in the evening. So I usually do like three or four sets of the TheraBand exercises that I just told you guys about. Um, I'll also be doing more calf raises and more like um, foot taps, stuff like that. Um, I'm even starting to do some single leg balance work with my crutches in the evening, um, trying to work on that proprioception or that stability of the foot, ankle, you know, knee, hip, all of it. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my day to day right now. And then after all those exercises, I will ice and elevate my foot and then I'll go to bed without my boot on. So I would say at this point, I'm probably only wearing my boot eight hours a day, let's say, because um, I'll wear it like in the morning when after I do all my exercises and get ready, I'll put it on. And then I have patience in the morning usually for like three or four hours and then I'll take it off and for like two hours and then I'll wear it for another couple hours. And then as soon as I get home, I take it back off again. So I'm really only wearing it probably about eight hours a day and it's working really well for me right now. I feel like my strength is really improving. I just wish my range of motion was improving. I honestly feel at this point that every time I push into my range of motion, like dorsiflexion, just like where I meet that resistance, it feels like I'm gonna re-rupture my Achilles. It feels really, really painful, really stiff. At this point, I'm kind of wondering, is that ever gonna go away? I don't know, it's still early and I know I'm not supposed to be pushing that. So I'm just kind of like letting time do its thing and I feel like it'll get better. But right now it's kind of discouraging because I'm an Olympic weightlifter and I usually squat low, like all the way down. Um, and I'm wondering, am I ever going to be able to get back to that stage? Because I have about 35 to 40 degrees of dorsiflexion on my uninvolved foot right now. And right now I have two degrees of dorsiflexion on my injured foot. So that's a huge disparity. And I just... I just wonder like do people get back to squatting that low i just feel like it's going to take so much time but only time will tell right oh so i do have some exciting stuff to share so i found some ways if you guys are like weightlifters or like to work out like to do deadlifts stuff like that i found ways to do some deadlifts this week um, I'll put the video right here. So you kind of have to like anchor yourself to a bench so your like other leg doesn't lift up and then it's almost like a 
stiff leg RDL sort of thing. The movement pattern isn't necessarily the same as a deadlift, but it's like the closest I feel like I've gotten to an actual deadlift since I got this injury. So that was really exciting to be actually feeling like I was lifting again. And I was also doing like muscle snatches and stuff like that from a kneeling position. Also very exciting. Um, so I'm, fi I'm like figuring out new things every single week that I can add in and start feeling more like myself, which is huge for like the mental aspect of an injury of this magnitude. So yeah, um, if you guys want more ideas, you guys can always jump on my Instagram page. I'm really posting my entire recovery there. I have a highlight devoted to each phase of my rehab, like in my bio. So you guys can like scroll to see like what exercise I exercises I was doing at what phase of my recovery and give you guys some ideas hopefully. I've still also been increasing my protein intake. I've been really being very diligent about protein and creatine and joint supplements with collagen in it. So I think that's helping. Only time's going to tell on that one too, but I really feel stronger and overall like healthier. Um, I'm in a better mind space. I just feel like I will be ready to tackle the next phase of rehab whenever I can actually start doing more more things because I've been kind of like ramping up my immune system and just like feeling stronger and I feel like swole like I don't know I mean I didn't work out yet today but I feel like my upper body's gotten a lot stronger too because I obviously like upper body is one of those things I can still do so I feel pretty good about where I'm at in my recovery a lot better than I was a couple weeks ago and I think that's pretty much it for the update this week Week four wasn't super crazy except for like the weight bearing stuff that I've been doing. And I go to the doctor next week. So hopefully I'll have some more exciting updates at that point. And then I can share a little bit more of that side of things then. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, the fourth episode of my recovery journey. If you have any questions, post them below. Be sure to subscribe and have a wonderful day.